Today, let us be like children again. Let us lie beneath the stars with our minds wide open to all possibilities. Today, let us be like the early explorers, those who left everything behind and set out across vast oceans, those whose long-held beliefs about their world disintegrated in the face of new discovery. This will be our mindset today. Early humans had a relationship of wonder with their universe, especially with those phenomena they could not rationally understand. To solve these mysteries, they created a vast pantheon of gods and goddesses to explain all that was beyond their understanding. Thunder, tides, earthquakes, volcanoes, plagues, and even love. For the early Greeks, the ebb and flow of the ocean was attributed to the shifting moods of Poseidon. The seasonal change to winter was caused by the planet's sadness at Persephone's annual abduction into the underworld. For the Romans, volcanoes were believed to be the home of Vulcan, blacksmith to the gods, who worked in a giant forge beneath the mountain, causing flames to spew out of his chimney. The ancients invented countless gods to explain not only the mysteries of their planet, but also the mysteries of their own bodies. Love was the result of being targeted by Eros, while epidemics were explained as a punishment sent by Apollo. When the ancients experienced gaps in their understanding of the world around them, they filled those gaps with gods. Countless gods filled countless gaps and yet, over the centuries, scientific knowledge increased. As the gaps in our understanding of the natural world gradually disappeared, our pantheon of gods began to shrink. For example, when we learned that the tides were caused by the lunar cycles, Poseidon was no longer necessary and we banished him as a foolish myth of an unenlightened time. The same fate befell all the gods, dying off one by one, as they outlived their relevance to our evolving intellects. But make no mistake about it, these gods did not go gentle into that good night. Today, we no longer believe in stories like those about Zeus, a boy raised by a goat and given powers by one-eyed creatures called Cyclops. For us, with the benefit of modern thinking, these tales have all been classified as mythology, quaint fictional stories that give us an entertaining glimpse into our superstitious past. Things are different now. We are the moderns. We are an intellectually evolved and technologically skilled people. We do not believe in giant blacksmiths working under volcanoes or in gods that control the tides or seasons. We are nothing like our ancient ancestors. Or are we? We consider ourselves modern rational individuals and yet our species' most widespread religion includes a whole host of magical claims. Humans inexplicably rising from the dead, miraculous virgin births, vengeful gods that send plagues and floods, mystical promises of an afterlife in cloud-swept heavens or fiery hells. So just for a moment, let us imagine the reaction of humankind's future historians and anthropologists. With the benefit of perspective, will they look back on our religious beliefs and categorize them as the mythologies of an unenlightened time? Will they look at our gods as we look at Zeus? Will they collect our sacred scriptures and banish them to the dusty bookshelf of history? Yes. Future generations will look at our current traditions and conclude that we live during an unenlightened time. As evidence, they will point out our beliefs that we were divinely created in a magical garden or that we sacrifice animals to honor our gods. How can it be that the modern human mind is capable of precise logical analysis and yet simultaneously permits us to accept religious beliefs that should crumble beneath even the slightest rational scrutiny? As it turns out, the answer is quite simple. Like an organic computer, your brain has an operating system, a series of rules that organizes and defines all of the chaotic input that flows in all day long. Language, a catchy tune, a siren, the taste of chocolate. As you can imagine, the stream of incoming information is frantically diverse and relentless, and your brain must make sense of it all. In fact, it's the very programming of your brain's operating system that defines your perception of reality. Unfortunately, the joke's on us, because whoever wrote the program for the human brain had a twisted sense of humor. It's not our fault that we believe the crazy things we believe. 
So what kind of bizarre operating system would create such illogical output? If we could look into the human mind and read its operating system, we would find something like this. This is our brain's root program and therefore this is exactly how humans are inclined, against chaos and in favor of order. The sound of someone banging randomly on a piano is unbearable and yet if we take those same notes and arrange them in a better order, our brains rejoice. Same notes, same instrument, but Mozart creates order. And it is this rejoicing in the creation of order that prompts humans to assemble jigsaw puzzles or straighten paintings on a wall. Our predisposition to organization is written into our DNA and so it should come as no surprise to us that the greatest invention the human mind has created is the computer, a machine designed specifically to help us create order out of chaos. Just imagine you have a powerful computer with access to all of the information in the world. You are permitted to ask this computer any questions you like. Probability suggests you would eventually ask one of two fundamental questions that have captivated humans since we first became self-aware. Where do we come from and where are we going? And when you ask these questions, this would be the computer's response. Not very helpful but at least it's honest. However, if you ask this little biological computer, where do we come from, something else happens. And now you ask, where are we going? For the human brain, any answer is better than no answer. We feel enormous discomfort when faced with insufficient data. And so our brains invent the data, offering us at the very least the illusion of order, creating myriad philosophies, mythologies and religions to reassure us that there is indeed an order and structure to the unseen world. Since the beginning of religious history, our species has been caught in a never-ending crossfire. Atheists, Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, the faithful of all religions. And the only thing that unites us all is our deep longing for peace. Just imagine what would happen if we miraculously learned the answers to life's big questions. If we all suddenly glimpsed the same unmistakable proof and realized we had no choice but to open our arms and accept it together as a species. Spiritual inquiry has always been the realm of religion, which encourages us to have blind faith in its teachings, even when they make little logical sense. But faith, by its very definition, requires placing your trust in something that is unseeable and undefinable, accepting as fact something for which there exists no empirical evidence. And so, understandably, we all end up placing our faith in different things because there is no universal truth. However, science is the antithesis of faith. Science, by definition, is the attempt to find physical proof for that which is unknown or not yet defined, and to reject superstition and misperception in favor of observable facts. When science offers an answer, that answer is universal. Humans do not go to war over it, they rally around it. The age of religion is drawing to a close and the age of science is dawning. And mankind is about to make a quantum leap in that direction. Stay tuned for part two.